Welcome to Table Talk Live, a Mahjong-centric variety show. On this episode, we're going to be talking to Debbie Barnett. She is a Mahjong instructor and author of Unlocking the Secrets of American Mahjong. Welcome, Debbie Barnett. Hi, Michelle. Good evening, and good evening, everyone who's joining us. Michelle, I want to first of all, I want to thank you for having me on the show. But most of all, I want to thank you for your contribution to the Mahjong community. Um, as a fellow teacher, I have um, such great respect for you and what you do. Um, and I'm just so happy we've been able to connect uh, through the Mahjong world. Yeah, we're fast friends. It seems yes. like when Mahjong is part of a relationship, you become fast friends. It's so, so true. Well, thank you for saying such kind things about me. I have chills and tears, both. <laughs> so I also want to quickly remind our viewers, if you have any questions for Debbie, write them in live chat in caps. That way I can quickly find them as we talk. Let me just double check chat to see if we have any questions right off the bat. And we don't. So... Debbie, I would love to hear how you first learned about Mahjong. Okay. Well, growing up as a child, my mom played with her friends, oh, probably five to six times a week, sometimes day, sometimes evening. And I just remember when she would host a game, and I would walk around the table. I was so interested in what was going on. And um, eventually, as I got older and into my uh, 20s, I started watching the ladies play at the Colony Beach and Tennis Club, which is a beach club that I belonged to growing up in New Haven, Connecticut, or actually East Haven, Connecticut. Uh, and I would bug these ladies, can I watch, can I watch? And they were like, sure, you can watch. And then one day I got the nerve up to ask them if I could actually play in a game. And they let me. And, um, you know, it was slow going in the beginning. But honestly, um, once I got hooked on it, once I sat down at that table, I was hooked. And it was that was it for me. And I don't ever remember people ask me, you know, who taught you? I don't mm -hmm. ever remember being taught how to play the game like, you know, like you teach and I teach. I mm -hmm. just don't remember having anybody teach me. I feel like it just happened through osmosis or something. So you, you, your recollection is that you sat at the table, you looked at the card, and you put together a hand. Kind of like that, yes. Right. I don't know that I made a hand right away, but I had already been peeking at the card and sitting there and, you know, being a real bug and pest yeah. uh, to the ladies, you know, which I kind of chuckle at because I called them old ladies back then. And now, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> don't say it. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> So you learned through observation. That's, that's, how, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And I've been addicted ever since. So so when, once you learned how to play in your 20s, did you then join um, a, just a local group or did you go play through a community of players? Well, that's a very good question because I was the youngest player at my beach club at the time. And none of my friends played the game. So I had decided if I was going to get together with other young mothers who, you know, were busy with kids during the day or maybe had to work, that I was going to put together an evening group and teach all of my friends how to play. And as a matter of fact, the other day, one of my girlfriends mentioned that to me and said, do you remember when you taught me how to play Mahjong? I'm like, yeah, I kind of remember, but it was a long time ago. Wow. Uh, so that's what I did is I started a group um, and it was just, it was wonderful. It really was. And is that when you first started thinking, hey, I could actually take teaching to a, a, a business. I could really do this as a business. At what point did you decide I'm 
become a Mahjong instructor? Yeah, actually, I didn't start teaching until 2006. And um, the way that came about was I had, was on the phone chatting with a friend of mine. And um, she's um, an entrepreneur. And, you know, I've always been have, have had that mindset. I've always uh, created businesses throughout my life. And I was telling her about how much I loved Mahjong. And I always would tease her. She didn't want to learn to play. And I would just tease oh. her. And I'm like, come on, come on, you got to learn. And she said, hey, by the way, um, why don't you teach Mahjong? You know, there's a great uh, platform called Meetup. And I'm like, Meetup, what's Meetup? And she said, oh, you got to go on and check it out. And I think Meetup was only about four years old at the time. And they took some momentum, you know, to get going. And so I get off the phone from her. I went on Meetup. I started reading about it. And I formed my first uh, Meetup group to teach Mahjong. And that was the beginning of it. And it was great because Meetup, as they became more well-known, um, anybody who Googled learn to play Mahjong in the Boca Raton, Florida area found me. And I mean, my phone was ringing off the wall. And I was like, wow, this is unbelievable. Yeah, so that's that was my experience with um, teaching. And then I've been teaching ever since. Are you still running meetup groups? I, I actually do run some meetup groups. Um, I don't have any um, groups now that I teach locally um, mm -hmm. because I have been busy. Um, as you kind of know, I'm going to talk more about it. Um, yeah. a, a new business venture for uh, teaching. Okay. That's interesting that you were sharing about meetup because that's how I started teaching American Mahjong also in 2008. Yeah, so I was just a little bit behind you there in Denver. I had started my meetup and I started teaching people how to play, but I was teaching Wright-Patterson Mahjong. And then I later learned um, that people were really more interested in American Mahjong with National Mahjong League rules. So I made the switch and started teaching and playing American Mahjong in around 2009. So that's interesting that we kind of got our start through oh, Meetup. Yeah. I mean, I don't even, I'm sure Meetup knows how fantastic they are, but it is such a wonderful thing. And, you know, there's so many people that still don't know about Meetup. It's crazy. Like, even though they would find me by searching in Google, they had no idea they were finding me through Meetup, you know? Yeah. So and I, I think some people are hesitant to join Meetup, but it's really like a, it's a social platform but it encourages live mm -hmm. events exactly. so the goal is to get people together in a live social event exactly. so i think once people understand what the format is for it really facilitates the rsvp and calendar of events and things like that it's yeah. interesting that we have that in common yeah, I wanted to point out in a chat we have a couple of comments one uh, from Marsha D. She says that she loves your golden rules of Mahjong. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I had, um, I'm not done with the golden rules. I have um, another couple of them to, to blog about, but I've had so much fun writing those because uh, I wanted to put a real comical twist to them, mm -hmm. uh, you know, about sometimes very uncomfortable subjects. And that's our etiquette and behaviors and, you know, habits around the Mahjong table. Yeah. So thank you for that. And I, I really want to have another episode of Table Talk Live to talk just about etiquette. And uh, the challenge with etiquette is it's subjective. Yes. What is kind to one person may not even be, you know, thought of for another or what is considered rude may not be considered rude. It just depends on your upbringing, your background, your yeah. thought processes, your the culture of your group and things like that. So exactly. it's kind of subjective, you know. Yeah. yeah, it is. But it is something to have fun with, too. Yeah. So many people are challenged with yeah. so many different things. Yeah, I think so, too. I've enjoyed reading your blogs on that as well. So when did you go from teaching about American Mahjong to writing a book. Okay. Well, last um, April, I, I started thinking about um, 
getting a fresh book out there. And what I mean about that is that there's been some very good books written on how to play American Mahjong, um, but there was nothing really current. So I thought first I wanted to get a current book out there. And secondly, I wanted to share my twist on my method of teaching. And as you know, um, we all have slightly different ways to teach the game, even though we follow the rules, you know, we have our own little secrets and our own little, um, you know, crazy little things that we teach people to help them learn the game. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, if I could put this in a book uh, and, and make it something fresh, that, that might be really cool. I also wanted to make it a bigger font. And interestingly enough, many people had uh, messaged me after they bought the book and they were like, thank you so much for the bigger font. <laughs> you know, it's so much easier to read. Uh, so I guess that was very helpful. I didn't even really know that I was doing that, although I did pick, you know, I did pick a bigger font, but I didn't realize it was going to have an impact on, on people. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing, Michelle, that um, I'm planning on doing, if everything goes uh, well, is that every year that the new card comes out, I'm going to create a supplement um, that can be sold online um, that will include the changes um, from the chapters that go over the card. Okay. Uh, the new card. So, okay. so that way it's always going to be fresh. So if someone buys the book, um, you know, I'll probably give them, you know, the supplement uh, maybe for free or maybe for a very small fee so I that see. they have the most current hands uh, to learn from. Mm -hmm. That's great. Like a companion. Yes, exactly. Yes. Okay. A companion piece. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, let me uh, check chat on Facebook real quick to see if we've missed anything. And then we'll talk about your next venture. Let's see. I'm going to scroll up just to see if we have any questions in caps. We do have someone, Laura, mentioned that she actually learned in 2013 through a meetup group going back to our earlier question about when you first started you went through meetup so right. it's interesting i wonder how many more people learned have learned through meetup group. yeah that's interesting it is so when you published your book mm -hmm. you something else going on in the wings why don't you tell us about your recent release okay okay so um at the same time i started writing the book um i actually um one of my very dear friends um was helping me um edit the book at the time and then she had said to me um why don't you teach mahjong online and you know right away i was ready to nix it and i'm like oh, what do you mean teach online i mean there's plenty of games and there's wonderful uh, websites where you can go in and play with, you know, other people and play with robots and get education and there is live streaming events and there's all kinds of things like that. And she said, yeah, but I don't mean that kind of a thing. And I'm like, okay, explain to me a little bit more what exactly you mean. Mm -hmm. And she said, I mean, where you actually have an online classroom where people can see you and you could see them and you could teach them and duplicate what you do when you're teaching them in person. So I thought, oh my God, could this be done? Could this be done? Well, needless to say, um, for the next three or four nights, I didn't get much sleep. As I compiled pages of things that I thought would need to be done to make this happen. And after that, I contacted some you know, web gamer uh, people and talked to them and interviewed them. And I got turned down by a lot of people who said, oh. no, it can't be done, no way, or this is going to cost you, mm -hmm. you know, way more than what I spent on it, which was a pretty good amount of money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just got turned down a lot. And I said, no, I, I'm going to keep going at it. And then I found um, a gentleman, believe it or not, in the Philippines. Oh, wow. Who said to me, you know, I know I'm not close to you. I know it might be scary working with someone in the Philippines, but I will assure you, I will give you whatever you need so you could see, get my references, check me out. Uh -huh. uh, but I want to do this project. I mean, wow. he was so eager to do it. 
And so we set up an agreement that he would give me weekly, uh, not weekly, but daily updates um, on the progression of how this online teaching environment was working. And 10 months later, I have now opened the online School of American Mahjong. And that's the name of the, of the online platform. Yes, yes. School of American Mahjong. Yes. Yeah. Okay, just so if anyone in the viewing audience wonders, I will have links in the video description below. Okay. Both Debbie's website where they, you can find information on the School of American Mahjong, but also her book, which is titled Unlocking the, Unlocking the Secrets of American Mahjong. Yeah. Unlocking the Secrets of American Mahjong. It sounds so exciting. It sounds like a little mysterious. <laughs> well, it is a mysterious game, you have to admit. <laughs> All right. And also, Irene was asking about the book and, and your blog address. So all those links will be, and they're actually in the video description right now. So mm -hmm. if you have a browser, you can open a new tab if you want and, and click those links. But I encourage you to continue watching as we talk more about it. So with your school, mm -hmm. how would somebody find information about what it is that you offer and, and what they would what the experience would be like for them? Okay. Um, uh, well, first of all, um, I want to just explain that it is, um, you know, I love live streaming. I participate in a lot of live streaming events, but um, I do want the audience to know that this is a different experience than that because I have had people mention to me, you know, that, you know, they already do live streaming or whatever. So um, it is a online live interactive classroom. So the way it works is, um, as of right now, but there's going to be a, a future change to this, but as of right now, uh, somebody needs to have Skype downloaded on their computer, their laptop, or their tablet. It works on all three, and they need to have a webcam, either one that's attached to their computer or one that's built in. Okay, so that's really the only two requirements needed. Okay. And then I um, dial in the class. So when I have a classroom of four beginners, I get a conference call going with the four students. Um, and then they've already signed up and paid for the class online, which I can explain just briefly about that. Mm -hmm. um, and once they log back in, it's right there under their classes, what they signed up for, and they click go to game and they're in the classroom environment, and we're all in the same environment. Okay. Um, so I have the ability when I'm teaching the game to um, go into each student's hand. Each student only sees their own rack and tiles, you know, okay. just if they were sitting at a table. But I have the ability to go into each student's hand um, and show them how to arrange their tiles, help them, you know, while they're learning how to uh, form their tiles into families, how to pick what they're going to pass in the Charleston, all of the things that you need to learn um, to actually, you know, that you need to know to learn this game mm -hmm. is done um, on my school. And uh, it's just been an incredible experience. And it's so much fun for the students. I mean, it is, it's a really is a hoop. We, we've been having a great time with it. So um, sign up is easy. Uh, it, it, the school website is www.mahjongteacher.com and Mahjong is spelled with one G. Um, I did that just for really ease in spelling it out uh, in case somebody forgets to put the other G in there. Okay. Um, and when you go in, you can look at the different classes that are offered and you click on that class, you sign up. It's it's just easy information, you know, your name, your address, um, you put your email address in and a, a username that's used on the website and um, it takes you to uh, the payment portal after that, um, which is either PayPal or credit cards, um, you know, and if somebody doesn't use the internet to pay, mm -hmm. well, I can arrange things outside outside of the um, online for payment too. Okay. And 
Uh, how have you had any trouble at all with people who maybe are uh, not as techno technologically savvy as uh, someone might maybe per perhaps be feel intimidated by the technology? Has there been any issues with that? Yes, that's a great question, Michelle. And yes, there has been some challenge with that. But my job is to help every student that wants to participate feel comfortable. So if I have to get on the computer with them and even to download something like TeamViewer so that I can get in their computer and walk them through the sign-up process and take them into the game room and show them how easy it is, I will do it. Um, I will do whatever it takes to make someone feel comfortable because that's probably my biggest challenge with getting students to join. They are, you know, they people think, um, you know, they don't want to get out of their old habits. And so mm -hmm. people think I have to learn this in person. I have to learn it locally where I live and in person. Mm -hmm. That's not always possible. Right, right. Well, here's the challenge with learning it in person. Um, if I have a class and I don't like to do, I used to do two tables and I was running around. Oh, I've lost a lot of weight though. <laughs> I was running around uh, two tables and I think I had three tables one time. And I thought, you know what, I'd rather have more classes and have a table of four because it just is more intimate. And so that's what I had started doing over the years. Well, what happens when one of the players forgets that they had signed up for the classes mm -hmm. or just calls because they decided, oh, I can't make it tonight. Something came up. Well, now I have three players and either I have to play that hand, which is, is very difficult for me because I'm, as I am, I'm running around and working with each individual student mm -hmm. to have to go and work on that um, hand that's missing with the missing person. So online, one of the really cool things about it is, is that if someone doesn't show up for a class or I only fill up a class with two people, I have the ability to play those other hands. And it's just with a click of the mouse. Okay. It's so nice. easy. It's so easy. So I never have to cancel a class. Oh, but that's wonderful. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see here. Let me check my list of questions. Let's see. So we talked about how someone registers and if there's any uh, technology mm -hmm. applications that, that you're there to help them with that. We'll have all the links to your sites in the video description so people yeah. will be able to reach out to you. Mm -hmm. Let me just double check and see if we have any questions from our viewers. Yeah, I, I, I don't see, see any right I, now. I see one from Irene Glennon. See Irene's? um message uh name oh, she of asked about the book and the blog address correct I, and uh i did, we can repeat that all those links are in the video description below excellent i excellent. entered those in there before the episode aired so you can get to that even right now you can there's a little downward arrow under the right corner of the youtube screen if you click that it'll reveal the video description and you'll see all those links there cool. so you'll be able to get to debbie's uh page for her book and her uh school of american mahjong so if anybody has any questions in the viewing audience please write them in caps in live chat gloria is asking what would be the cost of attending a class. Okay. Um, so there are three different classes. I have a beginner course, which is um, to each class is two hours. Um, there are four sessions. And so a total of eight hours. And the beginner course includes a current year's Mahjong card and Ma's helping hand highlighters. And for anybody who doesn't know what those are, they can send me, you know, a message later and I can explain that. But um, that is a $28 value there between those two items. So the the beginner class, because it includes those two items, is $125. Um, and then there is an advanced beginner 
intermediate course, which is two classes, and those are two hours each. And that class, you know, helps somebody um, further along their knowledge of the game and also introduces strategy um, to, to their um, learning. And then I have a, a, one, a two hour uh, single strategy class um, and that one is meant for somebody who's really been playing for a good while and has a handle on things and just wants to learn as much strategy as possible. So the, you know, the price goes from 50 to the 125 in, in that range, depending on which one of the, the classes you sign up for. I see. And these are all incidentally posted on the website for... Mm -hmm the School of American Mahjong. Correct. School Correct. Of is, American is, Mahjong or for American Mahjong? Um, well, it's, uh, a, it's the School of American Mahjong. Okay. And the, the website is the one that I gave you earlier, mahjongteacher.com. Okay. Um, I, I do have a web address for the school name, but I haven't yet linked it. So I have to yeah. have a guy do that. <laughs> so. Okay. All right. Well, Keep, me, keep in touch with me so I can update my link when you uh, go live with that URL. I so will. I do see another question. Someone is asking if you are based in Florida. Well, I am based in Florida, actually. I live in central Florida in a city called The Villages, one of the greatest cities on this planet, actually. Um, <laughs> I, Michelle, you remember, I was chatting with you about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and telling you all about it. But yes, I do live in Florida. But the, um, and I, you know, I wanted to mention one other quick thing, because um, obviously, these are online. Uh, this is an online class environment. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where somebody's located. They could be in California, they could be in Connecticut, they could be in Florida, they could be anywhere in the country. And I've had people um, take classes with their friends across the country because they all wanted to learn and they, when they vacation and visit each other, they all want to know how to play when they get together, um, you know, during a visit. So it's been very interesting, uh, the, the signups that I've had. I've had a mother who signed up with three sons. She bought wow. Christmas presents for all three of the sons. I had a husband, wife, a daughter, and her husband, again, a whole family, and they live right in the same neighborhood. So they learn together and now they're playing. I, one really important thing that I didn't mention, anybody who takes my one of my courses has my mentorship for life. Now, I'm, I want to specify that's my life because <laughs> you might not live me. So for my life, you have my mentorship. And what that means is what that looks like is if you're playing um, after you've learned and you have a question about a hand or whether you can do something because you've forgotten and we are going to forget when we're new players, mm -hmm. you can text me a question, you can text me a picture of the hand and I will respond as quickly as possible knowing that you're in the middle of a game. So I just wanted to share that. That's a wonderful perk. And that leads me to another question about Facebook. You have a wonderful Facebook group. So what prompted you to create Ask the Mahjong Teacher? Oh, well, that's that's another great question. And by the way, I see um, Marnie said she lives in the villages. That's really cool. Um, I, that's oh, there, there I see it now. Amazing. Um, so anyway, the Facebook group is um, Ask the Mahjong Teacher. Uh, and the reason I created that group was because um, I got frustrated sometimes in some of these other groups. I mean, they're great. Every group out there has its, its purpose and has wonderful things that they have to offer. But for me personally, I got frustrated sometimes if I asked a question um, or I saw somebody else ask a question. And before you know it, there's a hundred comments, like within 15 minutes of a hundred <laughs> comments. And, um, and so I thought, well, maybe it would be unique if I could create a Facebook, Facebook group um, where a teacher would respond with one answer and people could comment on it, but, but no answers um, are uh, allowed in the group. And I know sometimes that gets a little frustrating for some people, um, but it is working out well. And people have told me they really appreciate it because they know they can get one answer and find it 
and they don't have to search. So no. how are you able to keep people from commenting before you? Um, well, that's really a challenge because um, you probably also know, have that experience. Um, I very often am writing my answer out um, because, you know, I want to put a little bit of, um, you know, thought into what I'm going to sure. say. And if I'm not 100% sure about something, you better believe I'm going to research it because I don't know everything. Sometimes I forget. There's so many rules, okay? And I am human, so, you know, I am going to look for that. Um, but every once in a while, I'll be typing out my answer, and there I see those dots moving in Facebook, and somebody's <laughs> ready to chime in. Uh -huh. So when that happens, I, um, I remove the comment with a very nice uh, remark uh, to that person, letting them know that they violated the rules. And... Um, you know, to please refresh themselves with the rules of the group and give a little explanation as to why, um, you know, I created the group and, and really what its purpose is. Okay. So it's worked out great. There's a little training that, that takes place uh, on the Facebook group. So just to uh, summarize, uh, Debbie answers the original poster hers is the first comment. And that's a great way to get the thread started on the right path. Exactly. Make sure that we don't get a hundred different variations of, of answers that may or may not be correct. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, well, that's very interesting. And I, and I enjoy uh, seeing the original posts and the comments that follow. Well, thank you. Somebody did have a question for you. VB mom Markowski asks, um, how long have you been playing Mahjong, Debbie? Oh, well, I started when I was, I believe it was 26 years old, and I'm now 64. So you could do the math. <laughs> it's a long time. Yeah. Well, yeah. Me too. I, I've been playing for a very long time also, and it comes to a point where you, it, you know Mahjong like the back of your hand, which is probably why we've both ended up in, as instructors uh, for American Mahjong, when you play it for so long, you just have that ability to be able to teach and articulate the nuances of the game. And you've yeah. had time to learn different strategies and styles of play. Exactly. You've probably met a lot of people too who've played the game and have learned by observing them as well. So if there's yeah. a lot of information when it comes to someone who's been playing for years and years and years. Exactly. And isn't it exciting when people start getting it? That to me is, I yes. think I'm a little kid sometimes. I get so excited when someone finally gets it. Yeah, the light bulb. The light, light bulb goes off. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that is very, very exciting. And they just hit the ground running then. It's mm -hmm. really exciting. Oh, there was a Marsha D question there, Michelle. Do you see that one about? Let's see. Uh, 14 tile mahjong in florida do you find people who will only play for that's a good oh, question see. yeah that's a really good question because florida has gotten a really bad rap with the 14 tile thing but if you research it it didn't start in florida i think it started in new york if i'm not mistaken and or somewhere in the northeast and then those people became snowbirds and eventually mm -hmm. relocated to south florida and brought that 14 tile play in. Yeah. Don't, I don't encourage 14 tile play. Have you ever had to unteach that? Oh, yes. Yes, okay. I have. And I actually um, have somebody I play with in a regular group, and she plays 14 tile a couple of days a week, and she plays 13. And so we always have to, you know, um, when she goes to grab the tile, you know, you know, no, no, you know, when she, or when she goes to discard first, you know, we're like, oh. no, no. Yeah. So we have to remind her, it takes her a few turns to mm -hmm. turn on the 13 tile game, but yeah, that's uh it's interesting. Some people love it. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting because some people are taught old ways, the way that the game used to be played. And some people are taught house rules as if that those were the rules. Even they they may think that they're playing by the rules, but until they play with someone who does play by the rules, they may not even be aware of the difference. So sometimes teaching the game, we have to 
make corrections along the way mm -hmm. for people to be aware. Not that playing by house rules is a bad thing per se. Mm -hmm. You play the game that you enjoy. And right. there are lots and lots of conversations that go on in social media about how. Oh, God. I mean, yeah, some people want the strictly by the rules, mm -hmm. no table rules, because if you play a table rule, it means you're not playing real Mahjong. And yeah. you know what? It is a game. And mm -hmm. as long as you're having fun, I don't knock anybody for, you know, sometimes creating interesting twists to a game. As long as you keep the rules pretty much the same, mm -hmm. it does sometimes make things a little, you know, changes things up and makes things interesting. So I just let everybody do what they want to do when it comes to those table rules. Yeah. Or at least learn the game uh, and get to a place where you're confident and comfortable mm -hmm. with, the, with the official rules. And once you're at that place, then maybe dip your toe in the water of house rules, as it were, and learn some fun and interesting exactly. variations of the game, but know that they are variations. And there yes. are some people who are purists and yes. some people who are renegades or rebels. Oh boy. But we all enjoy it. <laughs> do you remember um, when people were playing with futures and do you have any idea when or why that came about? I think that that is kind of one of those variations along the 14 tile, 14, 14 tiles. Now, when you say 14 tiles, that could be known as picking ahead, which is different than playing with futures. There right. are two, 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 so a 14 tile game, I believe is- That's 14 in your hand. 14 in your hand, so you discard and pick. Exactly. And then um, playing with futures is where you pick your next discard, but you do not look at it. Correct. So those are two different variations, but I think they had probably the same origin. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a different spin on it. Yeah. Um, and one might have been the predecessor. I don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It looks like we yeah. have uh, another question here. Marcia said... I learned with futures too much cheating and the National League yes. really put an end to it. That's right. That's right. And Marsha, that's interesting that you even mentioned that because that was the next thing I was going to say. People were actually looking at those futures. And then if they had a joker, uh, sometimes they did some funky stuff. So you're mm -hmm. right. Cheating did exist, yeah. sadly to say. Yeah, it is. It is sad. And yeah. Yeah. So let's see. We do have someone mentioning Super Jokers being a house rule. Super Jokers, if if anyone is wondering about Super Jokers, this was a recent variation that came from Johnny Levine. Oh. I, I have a video on how that came to be, and it's a, a fascinating origin story. And it is a lot of fun. I I played with it and it is fun, but I don't think I would want to play with it. And really house rules in general, I, I think that they're fun to play on occasion and maybe at a special event or a fun party or something, but on a, in my regular group, we play strictly by national Mahjong league rules. And I do teach personally, I do teach by national Mahjong league rules. However, I do have at the end of my class, a, segment on variations where I do introduce all the different house rules so that if anybody happens to play with a group, they won't be caught off guard and at least they're aware. Yeah. And there I, are probably, I don't know, six to nine different house rules that are common today. Absolutely. It's good to be aware. It's good to be aware and sometimes play mm -hmm. them on occasion, but I like know, with, um, with the three people Mahjong, um, you know, we know that the league says no Charleston. Mm -hmm. um, however, you know, there are people that play with the Charleston and different, several different variations. Yes. And um, I had posted, somebody wanted to know about, well, if you do want to play with the Charleston, you know, what are the different ways? And I had posted a video that someone had made. Um, it was very well done. And somebody else just like was so upset that oh. I even posted that. 
<laughs> I had to defend myself on that one. Um, yeah. Yeah, they were like, you know, why are you posting that video? You're not supposed to play, uh, you know, with the Charleston. Well, again, house rules are created. And if somebody wants to play that mm -hmm. way, that's up to them. Yeah. I mean, and if you really think about it, it is a game and the natural progression of any game is variations. Think about Mahjong just as a game overall. It was yeah. created in the 1800s. Oh, and yeah. as the game came westward, every region it hit, there was a variation. Even American Mahjong is a variation yeah. on the original game placed played in the 1800s. We yeah. are playing a variation or a house rule, if you will. Yeah. So, you know, I think um, people, I think, hold Mahjong, whatever version they learn, they hold it near and dear. I mean, because it's really more than a game for many, many people. Yeah. And, and I think that's why people are so passionate about it. And yeah. some people are so passionate that they feel that the game is really you're only playing American Mahjong if you play strictly by the National Mahjong League rules. Yeah. As a matter of fact, there are, uh, you know, I don't know now, maybe six or seven other organizations that publish cards that follow the same conventions as American Mahjong. So once you learn American Mahjong using National Mahjong League rules with Debbie, you'll be able to play any of the, any of the other rule sets by the American Mahjong Association, Marvelous Mahjong, Next Generation, et cetera they all use the same conventions. So yeah. learning American Mahjong is just the start. There are lots of different ways that you can play with different cards and different house rules, but it's playing with the same tiles and mo mostly the same mechanisms during the game. Yeah. Let me check on chat to see if we have any other questions here. Somebody, we're, we're starting to talk here about <laughs> house rules. We should do an episode on house rules alone. I'm, I'm telling you, look at the atomic question. <laughs> yeah, someone's asking about atomic. Yeah. And that is another variation. I do have a video on that and it's where you can play an off card hand and it's their hands from Cantonese Mahjong. Usually it's seven pair and uh, all pung, all three of a kind, mm -hmm. any combination. So that would be atomic. Just to answer the question, mm -hmm. let's see. Um, I just want to check and see if we have any other questions. All right. I think I think we have all questions answered. So if anyone has any additional questions for Debbie on her book or on the School of American Mahjong, please write it in the comment section below so that we can get an answer directly from her right now in this episode. Otherwise, you can always contact her on her Facebook pages, which are going to be in the video description below. I'll make sure that that is correct and accurate after the episode ends. And then you can get to hold of her through her website as well. That'll be There'll be a link for that in the video description as well. So with that being said, I, I believe we can say that we have probably turned over every stone, unless there's anything else that you would like to add. No, I think that's about it. Um, you know, as, as long as you've got the um, website for the book and uh, the website for the school and my Facebook page, and mm -hmm. um, you can even provide my email address, uh, they can, people can get me a, in a lot of different ways and I'm more than happy. Oh, and I did want to mention one thing that I forgot. Um, if somebody's curious about how the online school works, um, I have a way to take them in the back door and give them a sneak peek of the workings of the school. So um, feel free if you are curious about it and you want to see how it works before committing to signing up, more than happy to do that. Okay, that's a very nice offer. And we do have a couple more questions here. One is your book available through the library? Oh, uh, you know, that's a good question. I know it's available. Um, my publisher is the one who gets that out there. And I don't know how the uh, library works exactly. Um, I do remember reading up about it. Um, and I think it's if I'm, and I don't want to say something that's not 100% accurate, but I think it's up to the library 
once they see a book is out there to then go ahead and make that available. Um, but I am not 100% sure. And I certainly, um, if you want to contact me and remind me, I will check that out to see, mm -hmm. you know, how that and when that happens. Okay. Or you maybe go into your library and ask if there's a request process. Yes, absolutely. That's a great idea. Another question did come up and they are wanting to know more about helping hands. Okay, well, the Maz, it's called Maz Helping Hands, um, and that's M A H S, um, which is short for Mahjong, basically, um, mm -hmm. Helping Hands. And what they are, um, and can, and everybody can see this, right? Can they see the? You have to hold it up. Okay, I'm going to do that, um, and I'm going to put it on the card just so they can see an example of what it is. Um, the, the kit comes with a sleeve and three highlighters. Um, is that up enough to yeah, see? I okay, think so. so you see, is, am I too close, Michelle? Or? Uh, no, no, you can, okay. you can see it. I'll be sure to put a link in the video description so that you can see. There are some videos that I've seen demonstrating how these highlighters work. Yes, and I do, I actually have a video link that I can also send to somebody if um, if they would like to see it more. But um, they're great for beginners. Um, mm -hmm. you know, once you've learned, uh, you, you'll probably want to, uh, you know, stop using the highlighters. But in the beginning, if you're keeping track of two or three hands, mm -hmm. it's nice to not have to be thinking, oh my God, what was the other hand I was playing? Mm -hmm. um, and, and you've got them highlighted for you. So they're nifty, nifty little tool. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Anything else from our viewers? Oh, uh, Marcia wants me to mention my Instagram as well. Yeah, I didn't have that as a link. So okay. we'll need I'll, to get that. I'll definitely give you that so you can have okay. that, Michelle. Very good. Uh, so, so after the episode, give me a little time to make sure that the video description has been updated with the things that we talked about today in this episode. Perfect. Perfect. Well, with that, Debbie, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to work with me in preparation for this episode and for joining me on Table Talk Live. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you. Yeah. And thank you so much, Michelle, for having me. Really. I'm just so happy we connected. And again, I just love everything you do for the Mahjong community. So keep up the good work. Oh, thank you very much. And I will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying myself as well. Great. Debbie. Until next time. Okay. Night, night. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Table Talk Live with Debbie Barnett, Mahjong instructor and author of Unlocking the Secrets to American Mahjong and School of American Mahjong. Again, all the links will be in the video description below. I'll go ahead and sign off for the night after I say thank you for joining me on this episode. I really appreciate you coming and making the time to join us for this episode. If you like this kind of video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click that little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next episode of Table Talk Live, May all your picks be keepers. Mm -hmm.